Hey there gang, it is time for another comic book unboxing video and I am so happy you're here. How happy am I? Well, look at this. I am Hulk riding a stegosaur levels of happy. Mm-hmm. That's some happy. <laughs> so <laughs> stick around. If you like comic books, we're going to have some fun. Hey there, Bubby. Welcome to Shanghala. My name is Duke, and this is an unboxing video, and it is a return to the mystery box. That's why I'm so glad you're here, because that, that's kind of become the bread and butter of, uh, of this channel uh, over the last year. July 3rd is when we will reach our first anniversary. I was hoping to get to 1,000 subscribers by then. Now I'm just hoping to get to 500, which, hey, you know, is still pretty impressive for kind of a nobody from nowhere. <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, we have taken side trips in the last few videos, looking at CGC books, looking at uh, processed returns, things that had been stuck in inventory hell and reprocessing those. We're finally back to the mystery box. And if this is your first time uh, at this channel, what this means is that I've got no idea what is in this box. I work for a company that buys comic books from all over the country, all over the world. They come into our warehouse in Freeport, Maine. The owner divvies them up into different sales streams. And the books that we're going to sell on eBay is what we call raw singles. That's what ends up on my desk. I need to put a grade on them. That's, that's pretty much what I do full time. That's about 25, 30 hours of my work week. And what is so exciting about it, again, is never knowing what I'm going to find. Now, to set your expectations, we're not going to find any $1,000 books in this box. Those have been sent off to CGC. Those are going to be sold on a site called comiclink.com. But we're also not going to find much junk in here either. Basically, these books, these things that we sell as raw singles, these are books that we would expect to close at an eBay auction at between... 10 and 100 bucks. So it's a lot of cool things that we're going to have a chance to chat about. And what is exciting for me and what I hope is exciting for you is that gosh wow sense of excitement, that that sort of energy that awakens your inner 12 year old. You know, when you, I don't know about you, but when I used to pedal my cheetah slick huffy bicycle to Joe's Smoke Shop in Waterville, Maine, <laughs> and, and, Never know what I was going to find, you know, because these days, well, I say these days, the last 30 years or so, you know, you know what's coming out every single week for comic books. You know, you've seen it in the solicitation catalog months before. You've seen it all online. You've practically read the book. Your money's all but spent before you even get to the comic book store. There's no surprises anymore. But back in those bygone halcyon days of my youth, back in the salad days when I had hair... <laughs> Uh, you just never knew what you were going to find. And that's what's so much fun about these boxes. I never know what I'm going to see, what I'm going to process. Almost every box, I find something I've never seen before. So that's fun for me. Hopefully that'll be fun for you. Let's not waste any more time. Uh, let's get right to it. I will pull out the first stack of books. And uh, pausing only just to get a little business out of the way, please do like, share, subscribe, comment, do all the groovy things. You know how this works. Help this channel grow. And if you comment and if you subscribe, you will automatically be entered into a random drawing. Once I hit 500 subscribers, I'll be giving away two Bronze Age mystery boxes that, that we sell. Uh, that's, uh, those are 10 or uh, sometimes 11 Bronze Age comic books, mostly from the 1970s. Maybe a few from the late 60s or early 80s. And uh, yeah, it's a retail value of $35. That's what we sold those boxes for. They're all sold out, but I've got two left that I'm going to give away once I hit 500 subscribers. So subscribe and leave a comment. All right, so let's get, let's get to it. Amazing Spider-Man number 135. Some Punisher, some Tarantula. J. Jonah being J. Jonah. <laughs> you got Harry looking particularly menacing. Mary Jane, yeah, that's a good book. Gotta like that. Oh, look at this. This is uh, Showcase Presents the Spectre. Great Murphy Anderson art in here. I, I really love Murphy Anderson. Some people say he's kind of a little stale, a little static, not a lot of dynamism but to his uh, poses, but I really, I just really love his brushwork, his inking. So yeah, the Spectre got a, a tryout in uh, Showcase. And that led to a, a brief solo series. Here's the uh, return of Warlock. He had uh, eight issues 
on his own. The book was canceled for a couple of years and then came back with number nine under Jim Starlin and uh, didn't last that long. About, uh, I don't know, lasted about issue 15 or so. But uh, that those books from 9 to 15, those are highly sought after by collectors today. And Warlock also appeared in Strange Tales, 178. I forget which issue has the first appearance of Gamora. I want to say it's 180 or 181, but I could be wrong. Well, here is 180, so if that's her first appearance, <laughs> there it is. And if it's 181, well, there's that. So... 179, pretty good shot here, somewhere in here, and I'll look it up and I'll pop it on the screen, whichever issue it is, but one of these issues has got the first appearance of Gamora. And now we're going to move to Fantastic Four 66. This is the uh, first appearance of Warlock. Well, I, I say it's the first appearance. The story starts here, and then in issue 67, that's often described as his first appearance, but it's basically basically a cameo where he pops out of that cocoon of his and then his first real appearance is in an issue of Thor but uh, these are sought after by collectors Submariner number five I think that's the first appearance of Tiger Shark so that's a good issue number six more Tiger Shark very dynamic cover issue 14 versus the Human Torch not sure if that's uh, Johnny Storm or if that's the original Human Torch. I assume it's Johnny Storm at this point. Here's issue 18. His head doesn't really look like it's attached to his body, right? It looks like something that was her head, too. Both of those heads look to me like they were cut and pasted on top. Like maybe Stan Lee didn't like how those heads came out and had somebody else redo the heads. I don't know. Might not be true, but that's what it looks like to me. I've got a stamp over here. SBD 55 cents. So there's something you don't like to see, but apparently that was done before before the collecting hobby really took off. That's why we invented a comic bag, something to put a sticker on. <laughs> Here's 19. Nothing can stop the stingray. And look at this, he's, he's hyphenated here. I think in any recent appearances he's had, frankly, I don't know how long it's been since Stingray has made an appearance in the Marvel Universe, but I think it's one word. Here's Doctor Doom, that's uh, kind of a classic cover. Issue 20, here's issue 21. The Invader Strikes, and you can see all the Atlanteans have their little water helmets so they can breathe. good for them. You don't want to go invading the surface world and not be able to breathe for golly, that would be awful, wouldn't it? <laughs> Here's uh, issue 22. This is during the brief phase when they gave Doctor Strange uh, what was perceived, I guess, to be a more heroic costume. Gave him a full face mask and these gloves with the gauntlets on them. Uh, and uh, that didn't last very long. This has got that same sticker, SBD 55 cents. Fantastic Four number 100, and that is a nice shape. Well, I mean, it's probably a 665, might even be a 7. That should do really well on eBay. 100. Avengers King Size number 4. The old Mylar case, the Ultra Pro sleeve. Oh my god. <laughs> what does this say here? Hundred dollars. Somebody wanted a hundred dollars. They with this masking tape they put on this bag for Iron Fist number one. Hurry, get this before IF gets his own series later this year by artist Jay Lee. Did that ever happen? I don't know if I remember an Iron Fist series by Jay Lee. I don't know if I can remember the last time Jay Lee did anything. Huh. Of course, I wasn't paying um, too much attention to Marvel in probably, probably around the 90s is when that sticker was put on there, maybe the early 2000s. Interesting. Here's issue two. Issue four. 
Issue 7. No one can kill Kumbula Bay. Interesting. There's a there's a cool uh, cool thing. You know, I don't know if you read the most recent Iron Fist series. Here's issue nine with a Dave Cockrum cover, but uh, Danny Rand has lost the Iron Fist power, much as he did in the Netflix uh, shows. I think it was in the Def the Defenders show that he lost his power. And now he's lost his power in the comics. And I bet you anything that uh, coming up soon, probably soon after Marvel uh, changes distributors in October and goes to uh, Random House Penguin, uh, cutting loose from Diamond, I bet you we will see an Iron Fist series with uh, Colleen Wing as the, uh, the new female Iron Fist. I bet you anything. Well, I'll bet you... <laughs> I'll bet you a hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, here is uh, Eleven with the Wrecking Crew. This guy's Thunderball. I think that guy is the Wrecker. His <laughs> crowbar was his his weapon. I don't remember these two guys' names. But Iron Fist against Captain America. That looks like a Dave Cockrum uh, cover as well. Number fifteen. This one is uh, highly sought after because it's a fairly early appearance of the new X-Men outside of their own title. And this costume here, Wolverine, only wore that costume for a few issues. Uh, the the Lady Claw there, the uh, female Wolverine, X-23, I think she wears a, a costume very similar to that now. But yeah, that's a, that's a good issue. Here's Amazing Spider-Man number 91. Look at that damn sticker here again, or um, stamp, I should say. 96, this is the first part of the three-part drug issue. That uh, And this is this has just celebrated its 50th anniversary. This says May, so that means it, uh, it came out actually in February of uh, 1971. So 50, just turned 50 years old. This is the celebrated drug story that Stan Lee did at the behest of of the Department of Health and Human Services. They wanted him to do something that uh, would uh, sort of speak to the uh, the evils of drugs. It was basically an early attempt at uh, Nancy Reagan's Just Say No or um, Mr. Key, Mr. T's um, Don't Be a Fool, Stay in School, Stay Out Drugs. <laughs> Sorry, I made myself laugh. <laughs> but um, uh, the problem was, was that uh, the... Uh, Comics Code Authority at that time was so tight that uh, they wouldn't allow the story. It, it failed the Comics Code Authority. So Stan Lee went to Marvel publisher Martin Goodman and said, you know, hey, uh, you know, the Comics Code Authority won't let me do this story, but the federal government asked me to do this story. What do we do? And the decision was made to just go ahead and publish it without the Comics Code Authority seal of approval. And uh, and that uh, really took off, uh, or at least it, it started the ball rolling, is what I should say, on uh, kind of loosening the leash a little bit on the Comics Code Authority. Because at this point, you couldn't use the word weird in a title. You know, the villains always had to lose every single uh, story or issue. Uh, you couldn't show cops in anything other than the, the most flattering light. And so uh, this this helped to loosen it up, helped it so that you could actually do stories about drugs and drug use and things like that. So, there you go. That's the first part of that three-part story. We do not have parts two and three. This is Amazing Spider-Man 99. It was stuck to that bag behind it. Here's issue 149, part of the Spider-Clone saga. And I pointed this out in bass pass boxes, but for a subtle coloring. You can see which one's the clone. He's the darker color, therefore the evil color. Because, you know, the Star Trek Animander universe, how you told the uh, evil people, unfortunately, Spidey's got a full face mask, so you can't tell if he's got a goatee or not. So they had to go with a darker color. <laughs> That's how they did that. All right, let's pull out the next box, see what we've got. <laughs> What shall we find? It's been a mighty Marvel box so far, hasn't it? And there is Amazing Spider-Man 52. 
Here's number 90. That's the death of Captain Gwen Stacy, blacked out here on the cover, so you you can't see uh, can't see who it is. Well, it's either that or this was inked by Tex Blaisdell. Tex Blaisdell had the motto, uh, when in doubt, black it out. <laughs> Here's issue 150. Spidey fights everybody. Doctor Strange number 5. Clea looking uh, very, very delish here in this cover by Frank Brunner. Issue, uh, issue 6. Here's some Aquaman, and I believe this is, uh, is this the first appearance of Aqua Girl? I don't know. Oh, yeah, meet Aqua Girl. So, yes, I would say it is. She didn't last very long and ended up getting killed in the crisis. This is a fun little series, actually. Secret Six. And I think it lasted about six issues, but it was a mystery. You had this uh, team of uh, secret agents led by a mysterious figure called Mockingbird that none of them knew. He was basically the era uh, Bosley. But uh, I if I remember right, he was secretly one of them. Uh, so this is this is a fun little series, and not hard to put together because there were only six issues, uh, or maybe seven. And then they came back in uh, Action Comics Weekly in the uh, late 80s there. Action Comics briefly became a weekly anthology title, and that was a good series uh, with art by uh, the great Dan Spiegel. Here we have uh, DC's version of The Shadow with a uh, Michael William Kaluta cover. He did the art on most of these issues, or at least most of the covers. Oh, wow. Here's another showcase with uh, how he posts Anthro, the uh, boy, the cave boy from 10 million BC or wherever he's from. Very nice. That's fun. Thor 411, that is the first appearance of the New Warriors. 432, so other than the 350th appearance of the Mighty Thor, what is special about this? I don't know. 344, is this the death of Baldur the Brave? I'm not, no, I don't think so. We've got several issues in here, and I bet they're all from the Walt Simonson run. Let's kind of get them out of the bag. See what we've got. Here's 344. Here, upside down, is 349. There is 389. I don't think that's something I would expect to sell for 10 bucks. I think some of these I might end up sticking in a multi book lot. Here's 390. And here we have 338, so that's the second appearance of Beta Ray Bill. And here we have 121. This is the death of, what do we got, 120 and 122. Cutouts on page 31. Huh. Well, it says 120 and 122, but that's 121. And I think there's only two books in here, but it's very color faded. It looks like this spent too much time in the sun. And it's got this big inch and a half chunk missing here. But anyway, what's special about this, this is a spoiler warning. This is the issue that has the death of Gwen Stacy. There she is. Although with the color fade, it's kind of hard, other than the headband, to tell her from uh, Mary Jane. I don't think I'm going to futz with getting it out of the bag while I've got the camera going, but next time maybe. Next time, maybe. Some X-Men. I think we're going to have a little run here from the reprint era. There's 84, 85, 87. Got a color fade here, too. 83. Switching over. Marvel feature presents The Thing and Iron Man. And these Thing team-ups... Ian Marvel feature became so popular that uh, they gave him his own title, Marvel 2 and 1. Jungle Action featuring the Black Panther. This might be the first Black Panther issue. I believe the first four issues of this title were reprints of jungle stories from the 1950s from Marvel's Atlas Comics phase. 
And I think this is the first one. Well, yeah, it says at last T'Challa stars in his own Smash series. So this is the first solo series of Black Panther. Ba -ba -doom. Feels like it's got a little water damage. And now it's just wrinkled up there on the back. Batman 244. Is that the first Raz al Ghul? I think it is. Captain Marvel 28 with the Avengers and Thanos. 27 with Star Fox and the Super Scroll. 31 Star Fox, Drax, the Avengers. Here's the uh, first issue, I believe, of that Marvel feature a series with The Thing and The Incredible Hulk as they are uh, fighting it out there. Prior to this, uh, the series, I can't remember the first couple of issues, but I don't know, like 5 to 10 or something like that featured Hank Pym, the Ant-Man. We've seen some uh, issues from that run in uh, recent boxes. We've seen this issue recently as well. Amazing Spider-Man 120. Here's Defenders number 10. Bit of a color fade on here, but it's a nice Hulk versus Thor cover that's popular. Hawkeye was briefly a member of the Defenders. So imagine a team that's got both Hawkeye and the Silver Surfer. <laughs> and I can't imagine that Submariner and Hawkeye would have got on very well, but... Who knows? Who knows? All right, let's keep on trucking. Keep on trucking, Daredevil Man Without Fear. I'm not sure what's special about this. There's X-Men 4, first appearance of Red Omega. Detective Comics, Year 2, Part 4. Todd McFarlane cover, and I think interior art as well. Yes. And that's a newsstand copy. Another newsstand copy, part three, also by Todd McFarlane. Web of Spider-Man 32, I think, Resurrection. So I think Spidey was dead for a while. I think this is, is this part of the um, Craven's Last Hunt? I'm not sure. Oh no, this is part of something else. No, this is a new, beginning a new special three-part adventure. I don't actually know what's special about these books. I don't have to, I'll have to look it up. Or you can leave a comment down below. You can leave a comment below. V for Vendetta, number one. Go back to some Walt Simonson Thor, 340. Death of Superman. Whoops. See, Hulk wanted to get in and uh, fight Superman. Finally, Hulk, Hulk smash. Puny Superman. There it is. There's the new stand copy. Another new stand copy. Mighty Thor 459. Can't tell you what's special about that one. I'll have to look it up. And if it isn't special enough, I will put it in a multi-book lot rather than a single. Boom, ba -doom, ba -doom. Boom, ba -doom, ba -doom. Here is some more. Beta Ray Bill. Who, uh, has he got his own series right now or he's going to get his own series? I forget which. Marvel Tales, that is a reprint uh, series uh, that uh, ran for quite a while. Reprinted early Spider-Man stories, and by this point, they were up to uh, collecting stories from the 1970s, and this represents the first appearance of the Punisher from Amazing Spider-Man 129. So if you ever want to read that story, and you don't want to pay buku bucks for ASM 129, you can get Marvel Tales 209. Here's Thor number 186 with uh, Hela. There's more of that same series. I I think this is Craven's Last Hunt, but it doesn't tell us. It just says the conclusion, part six, ascending. It doesn't tell us what the story is. I guess I could open it up and find out. No, well, doesn't tell us what the overall story is. Just that it is, in fact, a six-part saga. I don't think it's Craven's Last Hunt because we would have um, we would have Craven here. <laughs> 
<laughs> that would be the giveaway. Punisher War Journal. Uh, journal. That's a hard word to say, right? Starring Wolverine. Number seven with some more Wolverine. Captain America 352, I think. I think this is the infamous issue. No, maybe not. There, there's an issue of Captain America around this era where he's like strung out on drugs. Um, but I don't think this is it, although he looks pretty baked right there, doesn't he? <laughs> Here is uh, Captain Marvel, the Monica Rambeau version. Uh, and she her, her appearances have taken off since uh, she appeared on WandaVision. So hopefully that'll do well. Here's the wedding issue. Rumors that uh, the whole one more day thing that undid the wedding is going to be un itself undone. And we'll get back to uh, Mrs. Spider-Man. Here's some more from that story. I don't know what that story is. You know what? If I've got all six parts, and I think I do here, I might just make a set out of them rather than selling them as singles. Year One, Part Four, Frank Miller. Part Three, these are newsstand copies. That's good. There's Craven's Last Hunt. Part Two, I know this one is part of the Craven's Last Hunt. Or at least I feel like it is. And I feel like this is as well. Hmm. Here's another one, and it's a newsstand copy too. I think the other one, no, the other one was direct sales. This one is newsstand. Speedball, first appearance of Speedball. Animal Man number one, that was a fun series, at least through the first uh, several issues. Paladin, I don't know if this, uh, well, it's a Todd McFarlane issue, so it should do okay. This is the anniversary hologram cover. And let us pull out another stack here. A little small stack. There is Amazing Spider Man 330 with Punisher, now by Eric Larson. 325. 324, McFarlane cover. Sabretooth. Here's another one. Another McFarlane cover with uh, Captain America. Two for, two for Captain. Boom, boom, boom. Here's some Silver Sable action. Again, a McFarlane issue. More McFarlane at 322. And now, let's see what we have here. And this next stack, this next stack is not in bags. Cap versus Iron Man and 341. Although I think that's the John Walker captain. Although it does say Steve Rogers fights again. This uh, this is a take on the Avengers number four cover. 332. 335, the new Cap in his very first adventure, so that is the John Walker Captain America. What else have we got in here? I think 333, so I think that's the first appearance of John Walker. Either his first appearance or his first appearance in the costume, and then this one is the first uh, you know, actual mission. I think this is the first, um, what was he called? It wasn't Bucky, although he was called Bucky there, but I forget. And the search for Steve Rogers, where could he be? Here he is, uh, Dark Knight Returns, or Dark Knight Triumphant, as it would have you believe. This is book two, and it is a third printing. Here's book one, and it is also a third printing. Here is book three. What do you think? Third? 
No, first. Ha ha. You think of that. And number four, probably also a first. Yep. First. All right. Okay. Getting down towards the end of it here. Batman Year Three, George Perez. The two books there? No, I guess just one. There's another another copy. Silver Surfer 44 with some Thanos action. First issue of the first ongoing Punisher series. Multiple books in this bag. Boom, boom, boom. Probably number two. No, Daredevil 254. First appearance of Typhoid Mary. And Captain America 360, first appearance of Crossbones. That was fun. And this is uh, first Bishop. X-Men 282. Tales of Suspense, 95. 96. <laughs> I, love, I love those little dots, those you know, wide... Wide-eyed dots on uh, Captain America here. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I can't fly. I forgot. Damn. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awesome if the uh, if the wings on Captain America's uh, cowl worked like the little wings on Submariner's ankles and he could just, like, fly by, like, his head? That would be awesome. <laughs> Captain America special. Here's uh, 104. 103. You are the weakest link. Peacemaker. See, now I told you, you never know what you're going to find. And uh, it's the Peacemaker who, uh, these should be big. You know, if that John Cena series takes off at all, or even if even if the upcoming Suicide Squad movie is is well received, you might want to you might want to grab onto some Peacemaker issues because those could take off because they are they've been kind of non-starters in the back issue market for a lot a lot of years. You could probably get them pretty cheap, and they may be if they haven't already, they may be taking off. But I like this the fighting also the fighting five in the Canadian Keeper. What kind of caper do you believe they would have uh, in Canada? What would that be a boot, eh? <laughs> so there you go. I don't know what issue number that is. Oh, it looks like it's issue two. Neat. And this is this is the last stack in the box. So well, it looks like we've got another peacemaker. Number five. In the fire world, plus the fighting five. Boom, ba -doom. Number four. This is all Pat Boyette art. This looks like number three. It's kind of a cool looking dude there. Mystery Tales. So there's an old Marvel Atlas book. Pretty neat. Mystery Tales number 54. Oh, wow. Master Comics number 120. That's right toward the end of the run. Boy, that spine is rough there. We've got some staining and looks like the cover's detached. Fawcett books don't do nearly as well for us as I wish they did. And Captain Marvel books were big, big, big business for a lot of years. But nobody really seems to want them anymore. Not unless they're in super, super high grade. Which means, you know, they're just, they're just buying them to slab them. They're not buying them to, you know, to read them. So, there you go. That's, but that's kind of a phallic imagery, though, isn't it? <laughs> Junior's little, uh, little missile. And here we've got uh, the Marvel family number 38. So you've got them all. There's Shazam. And there's Mary Marvel. Captain Marvel Jr. Dr. Savannah. <laughs> A 
Well, that's it. That's that box. I hope you enjoyed that. I had fun. I hope you did as well. And, uh, oh, easy. Oh, we gotta do it this way. Sorry. Ah, here we go. Urgh, Hulk smash. Urgh. <laughs> I have no idea where this came from. Somebody gave me this. Um, but if you've got any little action figures and toys you want to get rid of, by golly, let me know. I'll give them a good home. Feature them here on the channel. But until the next video, uh, this is uh, the Hulk saying goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.